Thanks for joining us here on The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's a very beautiful Wednesday morning and uh, we hope that we have a very, very interesting run today. Uh, I'll start with, of course, uh, the trending stories. The latest release from the Pandora Papers detail illegal dealings of the Kebi State Governor Atiku Bagudu and his many shell companies. And it's one of the things that we'll be talking about today. Also, southern Nigerian states put anti-open grazing laws in place. But what does this mean for nomadic Katu herders? I'll be speaking this morning to the Secretary General of the Mietiala Katu Breeders Association, popularly called Makban. And also this morning, zoning causes internal wranglings within the Nigerian Governors Forum and major political parties. Is it the South's turn in 2023? Or will the presidency and other positions be thrown open? Those are some of the very interesting conversations we will be having this morning here on The Breakfast. And of course, uh, off the press, where we have a quick review of the major stories making headlines across Nigeria this Wednesday morning. I am Osao Gye Ogbonwan. Now let's first of all start with uh, some of the things that are trending. Yesterday I had spoken just a little bit about uh, more of the Pandora Papers expose on uh, you know many many seemingly corrupt dealings of politicians and and kings and you know the likes all over the world. All right, this was put together and it has about 11.9 million documents uh, by more than 600 investigative journalists across the world. Uh, Nigeria has 10 uh, persons of, uh, uh, that have been focused on and just two people have been uh, spoken about so far. The first one was uh, from Anambra State Governor Peter Obi, which I spoke about yesterday. And then, um, you know, also give a little hint of uh, the Kebi State Governor Tiku Bagudu whose uh, you know, uh, name also made the list. There's still expectations for many more Nigerian names, about eight more that would be um, exposed. But hey, Atiku Bagudu, Kebi State Governor, I'm going to quickly share from the Premium Times um, uh, page. It says, 11 years ago, Abu Bakar Bagudu, the current governor of uh, Kebi State, but then a senator dispatched a delegation to Singapore in search of a new haven to shelter his controversial wealth. It says investigators said the huge funds warehoused offshore is part of billions of dollars. Mr. Bagudu helped the Sani Abacha family steal from Nigeria in the 1990s. In 1997, some 13 years later, Mr. Bagudu had structured offshore holdings, uh, Ridley Trust and Ridley Group, in notorious tax and secrecy havens, uh, Guernsey and the British Virgin Islands, positioning himself as the unseen but ultimate beneficiary. In the months that followed, 99 million euros in cash and securities was then transferred from Ridley to a new structure enabled by Asia City, um, or Asia City, I beg your pardon, which brushed aside the red flags about Bagudu's controversial background and source of his wealth. Um, that's basically just a summary of what you know it, 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 it all states. If you search for the link um, on the Premium Times, it's, all, it's all online already. You would see very, very extensive uh, details concerning this, you know, where initially the funds were in the British Virgin Islands. And then at some point after, of course, um, you know, some deals had been signed, some money had been sent back to Nigeria. If you remember when there was $163 million that was uh, sent back to Nigeria, that was part of a plea bargain, I believe, for uh, the Kebi State governor. Um, who, of course, had spent some time in jail. There was a plea bargain, and then, you know, some of that money was repatriated uh, back to the country. Um, he then, at that point, moved some of those funds, according to the Premium Times report, or the Pandora Papers re report, rather, moved some of those funds uh, from the British Virgin Islands to Singapore, um, where, of course, um, the money has so far been kept. Um, it, it basically exposes um, where billions and billions of dollars that were... Uh, well, stolen from Nigeria in the Sani Abacha government, um, where, of course, stolen with the help of certain persons, including the current Kebi state governor, um, and, of course, the son of Sani Abacha and a few other people. Um, and, of course, some of all those funds have been sent back to Nigeria, but $3.6 billion has been sent back. There's still talks that there's many, many, many more of those funds that have not been found or sent back to Nigeria. But, you know, his name has come out, you know, as one of those. Uh, people who, of course, stashed millions of euros and you know dollars um, in you know secret in um, 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 havens, well, basically on shell companies um, in different parts of the world. Um, when this broke, okay, it it was basically coming off you know right after the Peter Obi story broke. 
Um, and of course, I spoke about the Peter Obi story yesterday and said, well, you know, from what it looks, there's not necessarily a crime that has been committed yet until there's further um, information on, on whether he, you know, should have, you know, revealed some of all those things to the Code of Conduct Bureau or not. But that would be for the legal team and whoever it is that decides to get into that um, conversation um, later. For um, Bagudu's story, um, it's not necessarily news and it's not necessarily breaking news for anybody uh, that... You know, he had, of course, been arrested in the United States um, and, um, you know, was charged with some of these money laundering crimes. Um, it's also not news that he was a part of the persons who um, allegedly had helped uh, Sanya Bacha then to steal billions of dollars from Nigeria. If you read the report, it says so much about how they used to, you know, um, source them, you know, two or three billion dollars, you know, allegedly to used for security um, um, investing in security here in Nigeria, but instead transferred, you know, all of that money to accounts outside Nigeria. Um, he was a part of that process. So it wasn't necessarily news when it broke. And a lot of the reactions to it really were saying, well, you know, this isn't news. Every, a lot of people already knew uh, about Bagudu's past. And, you know, you know and uh, Sanya Bacha, of course, very popular for the money laundering charges against him. But what was really um, the bone of contention with this conversation was, you know, the, the part where um, people then start to ask, how do we have people with these types of, you know, of history? How do we have persons with a history like this holding government positions in Nigeria today? And I'm going to, you know, say this along with some of the statements that I made on the NASCO uh, terrorism, um, you know, story and the controversy concerning, um, you know, uh, Maruna, um, uh, Kats yeah, yeah, I can't remember his name now, so the Katsina man um, that I spoke about yesterday that was allegedly, well, not allegedly, that was arrested by Nigeria Security uh, Service early 2000s by the Obasanjo government and eventually was released, charged with sponsoring terrorism, um, assisting with money laundering for terrorist organizations, trying to set up Taliban um, um, cells here in Nigeria. He was arrested then, was released, and then made his way back into government. He's currently um, one of the founding members of the Jibwis and one of the very, very popular persons in Nigeria, even taking pictures with President Muhammadu Buhari. How do persons like that eventually get to become you know, um, in political spaces, run businesses, own Bureau de, Ch Bureau de Chandra offices here in Nigeria, and many, many, many things like that. There's many of our politicians in the country today that have very, very dirty pasts. People who have also been found guilty of drug smuggling and drug trafficking many years ago in the 90s that eventually became governors. Um, uh, to, um, you know, in Nigeria, eventually became, you know, senators, eventually, be, you know, became members of the National Assembly and some of all of that. How do we have so many of those persons who have sought very dirty past, um, somehow, some way, make it into government offices here in Nigeria? And that really is the bone of contention. Um, how much do we need to look back at, at a person's past before we, you know, then eventually give them a go ahead to run for office here in Nigeria? And this will you know, it will cover so many spaces. Um, Issa Pantami, of course, you remember, um, you know, the accusations against him, you know, some of the statements that he had made. And it's not, it wasn't in, in any way denied that he made those statements. The defense instead from the Nigerian government was that, oh, you know, he was just young and, you know, he said those things while he was still, a, you know, still a young man, you know, and he, he knows better now. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that there's many of these persons who have either, you know, been drug smugglers um, or, you know, helped launder money or had, you know, links to terrorism that currently are in government in Nigeria and walking free. How much more um, of research do we need to do about the people who vie for political office in Nigeria? Um, and that's really where the major conversation is concerning uh, the Kebbi state governor um, and, of course, other people whose names will eventually be put out by Pandora Papers. I'll just quickly mention that it's not just here in Nigeria. There's about 360-plus uh, names across the world, presidents you know, in, and persons in Cuba, in Indonesia, in the United States, in the UK, in Nigeria, many, many places, kings, um, um, you know, heads of businesses, very popular names that have been named in the Pandora Papers expose. We'll be bringing you further details as, uh, of course, they drop, and uh, I'm looking forward to always talking about them. But for this morning, Atiku Bagudu, the Kebi state governor, is uh, the name in uh, question.
Let's move away from there, move away from Kebi now to another state in Nigeria, Kano, where there seems to be a family problem that has involved the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Not very long ago, I had seen a story of how the son of Abdullahi Ganduji had reported his mother to the EFCC for alleged fraud. Apparently, he had, you know, sought her assistance with uh, uh, getting land, you know, and, um, and, you know, some property for uh, foreign investors and people who had, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars to invest in Kano State, to buy land basically in Kano State, and about 35 million Naira also. But when they had come for the land that they had paid for, apparently it, was, it turned out that she had sold those lands to other people. And so it was obviously fraudulent. We hear about these things in many, many parts of Nigeria. There are places in Benin City where they tell you to not bother giving any money, <laughs> money to anybody you know, to buy land. Because by the time you get there, you realize that there are seven other people who have paid for that particular piece of land. And you will never get it. You, know, you will go to court for many, many years and you never get that land. But it was pretty much the same thing that she did, or she allegedly did. Um, and it was only just funny because it was her son who was reporting her to the EFCC. Um, she was eventually meant to show up at the EFCC's office uh, when she was um, invited for questioning and didn't show up. And the news then broke yesterday that she was arrested. It says that she didn't get to spend the night at the EFCC's um, office or anything. She was arrested maybe for a couple of hours um, and then, you know, very likely released. Um, it says um, here Abdulaziz was said to have reported his mother to the commission for corruptly using family power and status for personal enrichment. According to a report, in his petition, he stated that he was approached by a property developer to help facilitate the acquisition of some plot of land in Kano with some hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars and at least 35 million naira as facilitation commission. Um, he was said to have paid the money to his mother, but three months later, the property developer discovered that the plot of land he wanted and paid for had been allocated to other buyers. He then, of course... Um, asked to be refunded, and that never happened. And so there, that is, you know, basically a summary of the chaos in the Ganduje family um, between, you know, EFCC, mother, and son. And, of course, the questions that I, you know, have been wanting to ask is, you know, is, is you know, the Ganduje wife, is she commissioner for lands in Kano State? What leverage does she really have concerning land allocation in Kano State? If she's first lady of Kano State, which is fine, but... You know, how much influence does she or should she have with being able to allocate land to, you know, investors or, you know, persons of interest in Kano State? It doesn't, you know, seem to make a lot of sense that, you know, simply by being the governor's wife, you know, you have that much power. Of course, we're in Nigeria, so nothing shocks anybody. Uh, but, you know, as a governor's wife, should she have the, the leverage, you know, and the authority to allocate land to anybody, um, you know, and, um, you know, take her own kickbacks and her own commissions? for um, allocation of lands and you know, it's still part of you know the whole corruption that we speak about here in nigeria um in other crimes you know the wife very likely would be arrested would be charged for some of all these um, allegations maybe also the husband would decide oh this is too dirty for my political you know you know um you know space and so i would resign but of course, nobody gets to resign here in Nigeria because even if you're caught stuffing dollars in your Agbada, you know, you still get to keep your job and, you know, finish your tenure here in Nigeria. But anyway, just quickly share the little bit of chaos in the Ganduji family. And that's uh, our second top trending story for today. Finally, of course, uh, just before we move to off the press, the president has announced 75,000 Naira uh, per semester as um, a fees to students studying education in public schools here in Nigeria. It says the president, Mohamed Abouari, approved 75,000 as a stipend for, uh, per semester for education students in public universities across the country. He also approved 50,000 Naira as stipends for uh, Nigerian certificates in education students. Uh, the development part of his last year's promise uh, for the ed education sector and was announced by the Minister of Education at Damo Adamo during the annual celebration of World Teachers Day at the Eagle Square in Abuja. It's basically to encourage more people to get into uh, that uh, department and study education and hopefully become lecturers and teachers in the future. Um, of course, the reactions to this have been varying. There's people who have said, OK, well, this is good. It definitely will encourage more people to study education. But at the same time, it's not enough, you know, with 
with, with regards, if, if the plan really is to help boost the education sector, it really is not enough, you know, because the whole of education sector in Nigeria needs overhauling, needs more investments, needs better infrastructure, needs more funding. There's so much that needs to be done from the primary, secondary to the tertiary level of education here in Nigeria. The teachers, the students, the infrastructure, the universities, so much needs to be done. Our annual budget, um, you know, and um, allocation and the percentage of our budget uh, that goes to allocation uh, education, sorry, needs to be improved on every single year. Um, those are some of the things that should be more important than simply encouraging students to study education, because that may not really, really be effective um, in the long run. Eventually, you're still going to have a lot of people, you know, immigrating to other countries to, you know, uh, practice uh, their work after learning here in Nigeria. Those are our top three stories on Top Trend in this morning. And uh, thanks once again for joining us. We'll take a short break when we come back. Uh, Demola Kingbala will be joining us as the publisher of the Podium Media to share his thoughts on the stories making headlines across Nigeria this morning. Good morning once again.